Anesthesiologists really hold a special place in medicine. They can help us forget or have no awareness of some pretty difficult procedures. Dr. Jennifer Coleman tells me that pharmacology is a magical thing in her world, but it's also a two-way street, and these days more patients are requiring more medication to get the care they need. What made you want to get into anesthesia? I'm just curious. Like, I was like, oh, this would be fun. Knock people out. <laughs> I honestly didn't think that I was going to like my anesthesia rotation in medical school. I was mad that I was going to have to do it. Yeah. Uh, but I really enjoyed the ICU. And I realized that anesthesia was basically running an ICU one patient at a time. It's a physiology lab. Everything that I give takes less than 30 seconds to work, so I get instant gratification. And I can, I can see how well the patient's doing. Yeah. So it's, it's really very fulfilling. Asking a patient about their recreational drug use, legal or not, is something that's always been important for anesthesiologists prior to putting them under. Actually, we started doing it long before marijuana was even legalized in Colorado. Most anesthesiologists have noticed uh, that it takes a lot more anesthesia to keep some patients asleep, and it tended to correlate with cannabis use. What kind of difference are we talking about? If I was to do an anesthetic on someone who was a regular cannabis user, I might need this much propofol to get them asleep and, and keep them asleep, whereas a non-cannabis user may need this much. But usually it will take half of this bottle for someone to fall asleep during a colonoscopy. I've had it take this bottle entirely. So this is 20 mLs. It would normally take me half of this, so 10 mLs. This is 100 mLs. Even if people aren't honest pre-op about their drug habits, there are many vital signs and other things anesthesiologists constantly monitor to keep their patients safe. We'll usually figure it out once they're asleep because their body will tell us and their level of consciousness will tell us. When we think that somebody has ingested a substance that is mind altering so that their brain might not react normally and use the normal cues, then we go to brain waves to try and help us determine exactly where that person is in their consciousness. Dr. Coleman brought in Dr. Jeremy Robbins to demonstrate how brain waves are monitored while a patient is under anesthesia. So this is the illustrious and brilliant Dr. Robbins who's being our, our patient today. Uh, what he's got on is a sticker that picks up the brain waves in the frontal lobes here where a lot of decision making and conscious effort occurs. So we're, we have this hooked up to this monitor here called a sed line monitor where I can see the raw brain waves as they're coming through and then it gives me a processed number down here that shows me kind of what level of consciousness he has. When he was going under for anesthesia I would see a change in these waves from alpha to what we call delta waves, which closely re resemble the waves that we have during deep sleep, stage four sleep. This, uh, this calculated number here and the graph that I have would dip down so that this number would be ideally between 20 and 50, which is a shaded area here in the middle. That tells me that his brain is still working, but consciousness is likely not there. Um, in fact, almost 100% not going to be there uh, if we keep that in that range. Depending on how chronic, when they last used, they could be in the acute phase of, of the drug or they could be in kind of a mellower phase of the drug. So I could need either more or less anesthesia in order to keep them in this nice sweet spot. This gives me yet another visual and another way to tell that I'm where I need to be. It also works for stroke patients who may not need as much anesthesia to stay in that nice sweet spot. And it works for people who are elderly who also don't need as much so that we don't overdose the amount that they need and make them feel awful when they wake up. Uh, so, so there are quite a few uses for this particular machine. Besides the amount of anesthesia it takes to put a marijuana user under, Dr. Coleman also says sometimes the more difficult challenge comes post-op when it comes to managing pain. We have receptors in our body that are cannabinoid receptors and we naturally make some cannabinoid substances. When we use exogenous or extra cannabinoids as far as marijuana or CBD, mm -hmm. then we fill those receptors up. They can also cross-react with opioid receptors. So people 
don't respond well to our normal pain medications. Dr. Coleman also tells me research on how to best advise patients on marijuana use before surgery is still ongoing, but again, the big takeaway, always be honest with your doctor about what you're using. For News 5, I'm Ira Cronin.